Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consumes and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What are these treasures on earth that the Gospel of Matthew is referring to? Is it a Tesla? Or is it a home in Bora Bora just for vacations? Though in other places, Jesus has incisive words about money, Jesus isn't focused on money today. Instead, Jesus is considering this very nuanced kind of earthly treasure that is about the ego about the folly of the ego to store up praise, to seek esteem, to go about religion for the sake of self-promotion. This is folly. And Jesus says, if you store up these kinds of treasures, they will disintegrate. They do not last. He gives these examples of those who are very religious, who use religion to bring attention to themselves so that people would think well of them. And he uses them particularly because it is a deadly combination to use religion for self-promotion because you get even more lost because you keep telling yourself what a wonderful and good person you are. And when you do this constantly, you will not be able to find yourself out of a paper bag. It is foolishness. It is its own reward. Jesus says, you know, do these things of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, but do them in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. What is the secret way? Where is this room that we are supposed to go to, to shut the door? and pray to God. The word for room that is translated by the New Revised Standard Version is tamion. And it's a bit of a sterile translation to just call it a room. In Jesus' time, this word have, would have had some nuance most people would have heard, especially when Jesus is saying, your father who sees in secret will reward you. The nuance of this word is really a secret chamber, a secret chamber. Go into your secret chamber and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Again, where is this secret chamber? Well, Jesus tells us where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The heart is the secret chamber. In Jesus' day, the heart was considered a chamber. And in fact, today we know it actually has four chambers. 
It is the place where Jesus is saying to go, to put your treasure, to find treasure that is not consumed by moth or rust or thieves or our egos. It is where things last, where things have their meaning. So we are now given access to the heart as the secret place where we pray and give alms and fast. And Lent is about going to this place of the heart to get very quiet in there, to leave behind the avarice of the ego for esteem, for pleasure, for power, for control, for safety and security, all these things that so motivate us and to leave those things behind and to walk into the secret room to do the secret prayer. And this secret prayer is only truly about surrender, to surrender to God. Because we had been so confused about what gives us meaning, who we think we are, the image we would like to project out into the world. And God wants us to leave that behind and walk into this secret chamber and just surrender. Surrender to God's love, which is all that we need, which is the only thing that lasts. And here, the rust do not consume and thieves do not break in and steal. In Lent, we are often considering our fast. And some of us fast from chocolate or fast from meat. And those are physical manifestations of a deeper fast that Lent is really trying to get for us to do, is to fast really from the programs of happiness that we are wedded to, to fast and release the ego striving and to rest, to rest in God, to trust God. So Lent is really about a time to surrender to love, not as we think we ought to have it, but to the way that God already gives, which is unconditional, unconditional love. That is where Lent is leading us. So how to build this fast during Lent? I encourage you to go into that secret chamber to pray a prayer of surrender, to release yourselves, yourself into the hands of God and allow yourself to be loved without anything you have to perform or show or announce, without all the commentaries about how life hasn't worked out the way it's supposed to, and just accept yourself, accept others, accept the world as it is, and trust that God loves that. That is the treasure that lasts. So let us, during Lent, walk into this secret chamber of our heart, and let us pray there. And our Father, does see us. Amen.